Good morning. It's such a great joy and privilege for me to stand here and share God's word. And it's so wonderful to be in the house of God each morning praising his name. Now, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise God, he comes down and fills our atmosphere with his wonderful presence. And Paul says in Galatians, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So that means when we praise God, you know, God's presence comes down. And all the strongholds and bondages that we've been struggling with gets broken. That's what God's presence does. Every time we need God's help to break some of the bondages in our lives, the best thing to do is to praise him and keep praising him. So... It's so great to be in the presence of God, praising and worshipping Him. Uh, a few days back, I came across this, uh, this story which you know, I read about two workers who was uh, you know, working in a factory and they met uh, during their lunch break. And so they had a great lunch and after having that lunch, they went back to their workplace and the younger of the workers was telling to the older one, you know, I've been working in this factory for such a long time. I've been working my heart out. I've worked sincerely. Uh, I've put in extra hours, of pay, extra hours of work. And no matter how sincere I am, whenever I go to my boss and ask him for one extra day off, all he says to me is no. I've given him this excuse and that excuse. I've told him that uh, all kinds of excuses that I can think of, but I always keep getting the same answer, it's no. I don't know what to do about it, I need one extra day off. And the older one, the older worker just thought for some time and said, you see mate, you don't really know how these things are done here, you know. You need to learn these things from me, so just follow my lead. And so he takes the younger worker into, the, into his room, climbs the tallest ladder there and hangs upside down. And he hangs upside down and he tells the younger worker, now go call the boss. So the younger man goes and calls the boss and the boss comes and sees him and says, what are you doing up there? And the older worker says, I'm a light bulb. And this is the place where I should be, so I'm going to continue remaining here. And the boss says, what do you mean light bulb? Get down here. But the older worker refuses to move. He, the boss tells him everything, tries to persuade him, threatens him but the older man just stays put. And so finally the boss says, okay, okay, listen, I know you've been working so hard, you've been stressed out, I think you're losing your mind. So why don't you just take the day off and go and you know, get back your mental balance and come. And after he heard that, the older worker said, okay, fine, since you insist, I'll take the light off, I'll take the day off. And he climbs down, picks up his bag and starts to go. Now the younger worker who was standing there observes all this and he also took up his bag and starts to follow the older worker out. And the boss suddenly looks at him and says, now wait a minute, where are you going? And the younger worker says, you just removed my light bulb, how can I work in the dark? How can I work in the dark? You know, for most of us adults, working occupies a very significant place and a very significant portion of our time. It is one of our priorities to work. Yeah? Once we reach adulthood, we are expected to work. You know, some of us will work in factories, some of us are working in health institutions, some of us are working in educational establishments. Fathers in the family are, you know, working, providing for their families, protecting their families. Mothers in the family are working and building up their families. Grandparents in the family, they will be looking after the grandchildren sometimes or they'll be doing their work. Retired people, they'll also be, you know, sometimes busy working. So it doesn't matter what stage of adult life that we are in. Once we reach adulthood, we usually spend our times working. And when we work, you know, 
we interact with the people around us. Yeah? It doesn't matter whether we work in, uh, in institutions or companies, we are expected to interact with the people around us. So, if we work in um, healthcare institutions, we interact with the patients. If we work in uh, educational establishments like schools or college, we interact with students. If we work in factories and companies, we interact with colleagues. A significant portion of our time goes for work and for interaction with our colleagues. Some of us spend about eight hours working and interacting with our colleagues. For some, it's 12 hours. Depending on our shifts, it may be even be longer. The fact is we all spend our we all spend a significant portion of our time working. Why do we work? I know we work to provide for ourselves. We work to provide for our families. But is there any other reason? Why do we work? Does the Bible give us a reason for working? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, as believers, we are called not only to work to provide for ourselves, but we are called to work in such a way that our light shines, that our light shines so brightly that the colleagues around us, that the people whom we interact with will actually see us shining and will glorify God, our Heavenly Father. Now, as believers, you know, we are often tempted to put on the cloak of humility you know, and come to work very silently. It's very tempting, you know, come to work very silently, especially in places where believers are minority. We come to work silently. We tend not to draw attention to ourselves. We do our work quietly and then we disappear as soon as, the, as soon as the work timing is over. But the Bible says that when we work, we are expected to work in such a way that our light shines and shines so brightly. You know, we should understand that once we become believers, you know, God blesses us with gifts and abilities. You see, the work that we do, the vocation and the profession that we, that, and the um, work that we do, you know, it should be in direct response to the calling of God over our lives. In other words, our uh, abilities, our qualifications, our resources, everything that we have, is like the talents that God has given us to use and multiply in our workplace so that when God comes back, we can give it back to him a hundredfold. So once we know this, you know, once we understand this concept of work that God has placed us strategically in places so that we should shine for him, so that we should shine for him. And how is it possible for us to shine for him? We can shine if we understand that you know, we are blessed, not just to receive blessings, but to be agents of blessings. You know, when God called Abraham out, he said, I will bless you. And he didn't stop that. He said, in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. So when God calls us out, you know, he blesses us, not for us to keep it with ourselves. Yes, it is to enrich our lives, but it's also for us to be agents of God's blessing to the people around us. And how is that possible? How is it possible for us to be agents of God's blessing to the people around us? Is it possible to be a blessing? That is what we are going to see today. How do we become agents of blessings in our workplace? Let us turn to Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to read. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ears to hear as the learned. The first key to be a blessing in our workplace is to be blessed by God first. As believers, we should wake up in the morning and seek God's blessings over our lives. We should first receive God's blessings in our lives daily. If we do not receive any blessings from our life every day, we can never be effective agents to bless others. It is only after we receive God's blessings in our lives that we can effectively bless others in our workplace. We can effectively be agents of blessing in our workplace. So how do we receive God's blessings? Let us look at this verse again. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. The second part. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. You see, after we become believers, once we accept our Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God awakens us each morning to hear from Him. And this is just amazing to comprehend. You see, God loves us so much that even without us asking, He awakens us for us to receive His blessings. You know, God desires to bless us. He desires to bless us so that we can enjoy His blessings. And in the process, we can share God's blessings to others. So he awakens us morning by morning. Why does God awaken us? So that we should spend time in his presence. The more time we spend in God's presence, the more the time God speaks to us. When we spend time in God's presence, when we pray, we allow God to speak to us. When we worship God, we allow him to speak to us. When we read God's word, we allow him to speak to us. And when we hear him speak, when we meditate on his word, the Bible, we will hear him speak to us very, very clearly. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. I like the uh, New Living Translation. Yeah? The Sovereign Lord, Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4, the same verse. The New Living Translation says, The Sovereign Lord has given me words of wisdom so that I may know what to say to these weary ones. Morning by morning, he awakens me and opens my understanding to his will. When we spend time in God's presence, not only does God speak to us, he also opens our ears to understand his words. Remember our Lord Jesus when he walked the earth and did his earthly ministry, frequently said, he who has ears, let him hear and understand. See, when we seek God's word each morning, when we read his word each morning, he will speak to us and make us understand his word. Even, and when, when God speaks to us, even wise men, learned men, will not be able to come close to the wisdom that God gives to the believer. And why does God give these words of wisdom? Why does God reveal such wisdom to us believers? The answer is in the first part of the same verse, that I should know how to speak. You see, God gives us the tongue of the learned and speaks words of wisdom to us so that we will know how and what to speak. Many times it is our own words that determine our future and our destiny. Some of us are so generous with our words that, you know, we not only spoil our future with our own words, but we also make sure that we tend to spoil the future of the people around us. So as believers, it is very important for us to learn to speak wisely. We must exercise wisdom and control of our tongue before we speak. Our Lord awakens us each morning to speak to us words of wisdom so that we can use his godly words over ourselves and over the people with whom we will interact with each day. Now let's look at the same verse again. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned so that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. 
in season to him who is weary. In our workplace, God will bring to us people who are weary, people who are hurting, people who are discouraged, people who are disillusioned, and them who need some encouragement from us. And God will bring us in contact with these people in our places of work for us so that we have the opportunity to encourage them with God's words of wisdom. God will bring them to us to lift them up and build them up with our words. But we can never do that effectively if we do not spend enough time with God each morning and listen to what he has to say to us. So how can we become agents of blessing in our workplace? First, we should seek God's blessings each morning. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 11, in Lamentation, sorry, verse 23 of chapter 3, God's mercies are new every morning. As believers, it is our responsibility to receive these mercies and blessings from God, which God has prepared for us. And as Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. You know, the New Living Translation says the same verse. The same verse. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you see be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. To those who hear them. Many times, when we speak, we forget that we are hearing our own words. You know, even though we speak our words to others, we hear our own words. So when we use words to bless and encourage others, the same words will have the effect, the same effect on us. So we should choose our words wisely when we speak to our colleagues. So the first key to being an agent of blessing in the workplace, be blessed by God. Be blessed by God, then we can be agents of blessings. Now let's read verse 5 of Isaiah 50. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The Sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I have listened. I do not rebel or turn away. Verse 7, because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be dismayed. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will triumph. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will. What is the second key to being an agent of blessing in our workplace? Be determined to obey God. Be determined to do God's will. You see, brothers and sisters, when God speaks to us, he not only tells us what to say to others, he also tells us what to do for that day and how to do it effectively. Sometimes it may not be easy to do what God tells us to do. You know? Sometimes God may tell us to go and apologize to someone who is younger than us. Or sometimes God may tell us that we made a couple of mistakes the previous day and we have to go and set it right. Sometimes God may tell us to go and correct a junior colleague or even a senior colleague. You know, sometimes the things that God tells us to do may not be easy to do. But whatever it is that God tells us to do, it is important that we as believers should obey him. Rebelling and disobeying God's command will not only bring harm to us, it will also affect everyone who is with us. When the prophet Jonah, you know, heard God's voice to go to Nineveh. The first thing he did was he tried to rebel and run away and disobey. He took the first ship, you know, he went to the sea and he probably saw this big ship going to Tarshish and he thought, okay, this is such a big ship that, you know, so many people are here. If I disguise myself and go with them, God may not be able to recognize me. So I can escape. There's no need for me to go to Nineveh. And what happened? You know, God sent such a violent storm over the sea. It was so violent that people in the ship got so scared. And not only 
did the people got so scared no they tried their level best to steer the ship and in the process they even lost their positions whose fault was that it was because of jonah's disobedience you know when we as believers disobey god you know, we not only really, um prevent god's blessings from acting on our lives we not only really bring trouble on ourselves we also bring trouble to the people around us so every time believers disobey god they not only really block god's blessings on their lives they also bring people trouble problems to the people around us as long as adam walked in obedience to god the ground was fertile the minute adam disobeyed god not rather the minute once adam disobeyed god the ground was cursed it lost its fertility as believers we must also understand that when we obey god our obedience to god establishes god's kingdom around us and this in turn brings his blessings to all the people around us in the same way our disobedience to god brings problems not only to us but also to the people around us and that is why isaiah says in verse 7 therefore i have set my face like a stone determined to do his will and i know i will triumph when god speaks to us and tells us what to do we should be like isaiah set our faces like stone don't bother about what others think just be determined to obey the god just be determined to obey our lord it doesn't matter what our neighbors think it doesn't matter what they say behind our backs just do what our lord says and in the end only we will triumph once we obey god's word so what's the first key in being agents of blessing in our workplace be blessed by god the second key be determined to obey god now let's read verse 8 same chapter isaiah chapter 50 and verse 8 he is near who justifies me who will contend with me let us stand together who is my adversary let us come near let him come near me i will read the same verse from the new living translation he who gives me justice is near who will dare to oppose me now where are my enemies let them appear the third key to being an agent of blessing in your workplace be strong in the lord be strong in the lord as believers we can expect to have enemies whether we do anything to make them angry or not that's not the issue when believers as believers we work for god we can expect people to rise up against us ephesians 6 and 12 verse 12 it's a very very well known verse what does it say yes brother exactly for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places talk about enemies huh? <laughs> this verse gives us an idea of what our enemies look like you know but nevertheless when we study the bible closely we can see that we do not need to fear our enemies at all when we encounter anyone being hostile to us we should be strong in the lord many times when we remain strong in the lord in spite of having problems in spite of people opposing us we forget you know that god can sometimes use our enemies you know to lift us to where we are if you look at uh, you know when i when i first realized this i too was shocked you know how can god use our enemies to lift us to where we are but when we look at the life of king david you know, when did david actually become famous only after he slew his enemy goliath till that time he was an unknown shepherd boy nobody actually even you know considered him i mean the prophet samuel came anointed him god's spirit came upon him but still he was an unknown person it was only after david defeated his giant that people started talking about david Saul has killed his thousands and David has killed tens of thousands people started looking as David as the next possible king of Israel you know i think goliath 
was created specifically to promote David to his kingship. You know, even after, uh, um, sometimes even after everything that we do, you know, all the times when we become, when, when we are very close to God, when we see enemies rising up against them, against us, we should never be discouraged. You know? We should never lose hope. We should continue to remain strong in the Lord. Many times, we often think that it is only our friends who can lift us up and help us achieve things. That may be true, but in God's eyes, even a believer's enemies can be used by God to lift up the believer. In our lives, God may sometimes give us friends to encourage us and strengthen us and build us our faith and build up our faith. In the same way, God may also use a few giants to come along our way. And uh, God may, God does not send these giants to defeat us. You know, he doesn't send these giants to uh, discourage us. But he sends these giants to help us reach the level that he wants us to be. When we encounter opposition and when we encounter enemies coming against us, we must remember that God has a reason in allowing them to come against us. It may be hard to understand at that moment, but when we overcome the opposition at the end and still stand firm in our faith, it is only then that we will realize why God has sent these oppositions to us. When we overcome all the problems, it is only then that we will realize that you know God still has his eye on us and God still has his favor upon us. A life without enemies may cause us to become very complacent. You know, when the church went through persecution in the book of Acts, it was then that the gospel spread far and wide. Sometimes God's, God may allow an enemy to cross our paths just to keep us, you know, on our feet, just to keep us stirred up in our faith. When we read the Bible, we find that the Israelites remembered God mostly when they were suffering under foreign kings. When they were under bondage under foreign kings, when they were oppressed, that is the time when they cried out to God and remembered God. In the same way, our critics and others who oppose us can bring about sometimes the best in us. God allows opposition in our lives to teach us things that we do not know about ourselves. When the children of Israel face their enemies, more often than not, they always turn to God for help. Our enemies may help keep us focused on our Lord. Some of our adversaries may even cause us to pray harder. You know, some of the people who come against us may actually cause us to come forward in our career. In the same way, King David, who faced his enemy Goliath, also said in Psalm chapter 23, You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. When we remain strong in the Lord, in spite of having to face giants in our lives, there will come a time when God will lift us up in the presence of all who oppose us, so that the whole world can see God's favor on our lives. When we remain strong to God, in spite of enemies coming against us, in spite of obstacles coming against us, you know, that is the time when God lifts us up and we are able to see his favor. Now sometimes, enemies may not always mean just physical people. You know, enemies can also mean health issues. Enemies can also mean financial issues. Issues. Enemies can mean problems inside our family. Enemies can also mean f problems with our children. Anything which threatens to weaken our faith, anything which threaten, threatens to, you know, spoil our walk with God, that will be an enemy. So when believers come against such enemy, we should never forget that our God is still on the throne. And that this enemy which has come against us will only help us get to our destiny. So remain strong in the Lord. No matter what the opposition is, we should never lose our faith or our calling. <clears throat> There's a story about a pastor you know, who was preaching one day. And when he was preaching, he suddenly noticed one, one of his uh, members who 
you know didn't come to church for a long time and he noticed him there and and after service he went to meet him <coughs> and the pastor said brother you need to be in the army of the lord and the member said pastor i am already in the army of the lord and the pastor replied then how come i don't see you at all except on christmas and on easter days and the member said you see pastor i'm in the secret service <coughs> remain strong in the lord see how do we remain strong in the lord by coming to church by listening to his word you know remain strong in the lord you know we shouldn't you know try to be in god's secret service no god doesn't need a secret service you know, he needs people to be in the army full time service <coughs> so let's remain strong in the lord so what's the first key to being a blessing in our workplace be blessed by god what's the second key to be determined to obey god what's the third key be strong in the lord now what's the fourth key <clears throat> let's see verse 10 <clears throat> isaiah chapter 50 and verse 10 i will read it from the new living translation <clears throat> who among you fears the lord and obeys his servant if you are walking in darkness without a ray of light trust in the lord and rely on our god trust in the lord and rely on our god the fourth key rely on the lord depend on the lord rely on our god as he as believers we have to understand that as we work in our workplaces we interact with our colleagues and when we interact with our colleagues not everything will go according to our expectations always you know sometimes our promotions may get delayed sometimes you know our appraisals may not come to our expectations when we have done our work with all sincerity and sometimes even walked the extra mile excuse me when we have done everything that we can walked the extra mile helped our colleagues with work we may still not receive any recognition we may still not receive the credit that we are looking for and at such times it is very very easy to get discouraged that is because we tend to rely on people we tend to look up to people for our self approval sometimes the very reason for us to work for a very reason for us working is to please other people we tend to get addicted to people's compliments you know we tend to get people praising us we tend to get addicted to people who are praising us and uh, we tend to get addicted to people who you know to the to the encouragement of people daily the problem here is that our approval should not come from people our approval should come from god we should rely only on god for our approval and not on people's approvals we should try not to be a pleaser of man but we should try to be a pleaser of god as believers our worth and our value should not come from other people you know it should come from god in the bible we see that the apostle peter even though he loved our lord jesus yet at the time of crucifixion he was worried about what others thought he was scared about what others thought and because he was scared of them he denied our lord jesus three times but did that upset our lord jesus no it didn't it didn't cause him to you know feel upset and agonize over it no he continued the work that he was doing he knew our lord jesus knew that his destiny was much greater than peter's approval or the approval of the people around him in the same way we should quit relying on people what other people can do or cannot do does not determine our worth it is god who gives us a purpose and meaning to our lives so as believers 
we need to stop expecting people to encourage us and we need to start encouraging ourselves you know people may not make you feel special but that's okay you know many times people may not encourage us but that's okay we can encourage ourselves we can make ourselves feel special by speaking god's promises over our lives i am a child of god i am a child of the most high i am one of a kind you know i am crowned with god's favor i am a masterpiece we when we speak god's blessings over our lives we get god's approval we don't need rather we shouldn't rely on people's approval we must learn as believers to receive our value from our heavenly father when we expect people to validate us when we expect our friends and family members to continuously keep validating us you know we become very needy and we become a burden to them our workplaces and our colleagues are not responsible for our happiness you know we should not rely on them to keep us cheerful but we should rely on god for our value and no one can take that value away from us you know unlike people god does not change his mind the bible says that god loves us with an everlasting love and his love is so strong for us it will keep following us all the days of our life there may be times when we do not get the credit that we deserve there may be times when people will use us and you know they will use such hurting words to disrespect us and put us down but as people the padas believers we shouldn't let these people you know the words of these people to affect us the only power that people has against us is how much power we allow them to have our lord jesus when he was doing his ministry on earth he encountered lots of people like that you know many people tried to discredit discredit him some even said that he was using evil spirits to do miracles but did that make our lord jesus discouraged no it didn't you know our lord jesus never never sought the approval of people he always knew where his approval came from he always knew that his approval came from god our heavenly father the bible says in psalm chapter 75 promotion comes not from the east not from the west but it comes from god who puts down one and lifts up another as believers we should never rely on people for our approval or for our value if we want to be agents of blessings in our workplace we need to rely on god we need to look only for his approval it is god's approval that matters to us so what are our keys for being a blessing in our workplace first be blessed by god second be determined to obey god third be strong in the lord fourth rely on the lord be dependent on god now why should we be agents of blessing in our workplace why is it so important for us to be agents of blessing in our workplace let's turn to colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 colossians chapter 3 verse 17 and whatsoever you do or say let it be as a representative of the lord jesus all the while giving thanks through him to god our heavenly father we believers should be agents of blessings because we are representatives of our lord jesus when we get saved by believing by becoming believers in our lord jesus god our heavenly father gives us a unique position and that is to be representatives of our lord jesus so in our workplace every word that we speak every deed that we do either lifts up our lord jesus or puts him down every act that we do in our workplace either lifts up our lord jesus in the eyes of our colleagues or it dishonors our lord jesus in the eyes of the colleagues we believers should be only the representatives of our lord jesus therefore it is very important for all believers to be 
agents of blessings in our workplace. We should remember that when we go to our workplace each morning, we represent our Lord Jesus. And therefore, we should be careful with the words that we do. We should be careful with the words that we say and with the deeds that we do. There's one more reason why we should be agents of blessings in the workplace. And let's turn to John. For that, let us turn to John chapter 17 and verse 20. John chapter 17 and verse 20. Here we find Jesus praying. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me because of their testimony. You know, when we think about this verse, actually our Lord Jesus was praying for generations of Christians down. You know, he actually God, our Lord Jesus prayed for us as he was completing his earthly ministry. In the same way, you know, we are offshoots. You know, we, we became believers because our forefathers saw the testimony of someone who saw the testimony of someone who saw the testimony of, our, of the disciples of our Lord Jesus. In the same way, our testimonies have the power to be life-changing. When we work, when we go to our workplaces, when we work in our workplaces, we exude our testimony. Our testimony is open to our colleagues. You know, our colleagues see our testimony. They observe what we are doing. And very often than not, sometimes our colleagues, we will be the only testimonies that our colleagues will see in our workplaces. So why should we be agents of blessings in our workplace? Because we believers have the privilege and responsibility of being representatives of our Lord Jesus to our colleagues. And secondly, because our testimony can be life-changing to the people around us. If we are effective agents of blessings, we will draw our colleagues and our neighbors to our Lord Jesus. And when we do that, we give them a chance to have eternal life and eternal blessings. The question is, do we want to be agents of blessings in our workplace? Do we want? You see, God has given us this privilege, but it depends on us to choose to be agents of blessings in our workplace. If we want to be agents of blessings in our workplace, we need to look up to God and ask him his help. Let's rise to our feet. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that for this unique privilege that you have given to us, this unique opportunity that you have given to us to become channels of blessings to our workplace, to become agents of blessings in our workplace. Lord, you gave us the privilege to represent you. And so we pray that you may help us to do that. Father, our talents and our, um, our qualifications, everything has been given by you for one purpose, to shine for you in our workplace to point others to you in our workplace. And so we pray that, Lord, you may enable us and empower us to be agents of blessings in our workplace so that our colleagues may see us and be drawn to you. We ask for forgiveness for the times that we have been selfish. We ask for forgiveness for the times that we have not listened to your voice. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, for the times that we have not received blessings from you, that we have not taken time to receive blessings from you. We ask for forgiveness for the times that we have not used our words wisely to our colleagues. Lord, forgive us, Father. Forgive us for the times when we relied on people's approval. Forgive us for the times that we, we were not determined to obey your will. And, and give us a fresh anointing. Empower us, Lord, Empower us so that when we go to our workplaces daily, when we interact with our colleagues daily, when we interact with our friends daily, 
we may be effective agents of blessing in our workplace. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We know, Father, that this is the day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for all of us who are gathered in your presence. Father, we come to you with needs. We come to you with spiritual needs. We come to you with physical needs. We pray, Father, that even as we come before your presence, Lord, you may reach out and touch us. And Father, bless us, Lord. And whatever our needs are, meet us, O oh Father, at the point of our needs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. Let it become alive in our lives. Let it be sown deep into our hearts and grow up and flourish and bear fruit. All our prayer petitions we offer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of our Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen.